All right, guys. Um, okay, so we're going to have, uh, you've got one set of notes here, Momentum Notes Part 2. Um, I'm actually going to split it up into three different videos uh, to make it a little bit easier for you guys to handle because there's three different topics we want to talk about. But all these topics um, all have to do with the lab that we did yesterday, that collision lab. It's a really good lab. If you're not done with it, um, you need to find time to finish it uh, because it's, it's really important and it really gives you a good idea of what we're doing. It's going to make these notes make a lot more sense. Okay, so your topic, Momentum Notes Part 2. Uh, let's write an essential question. So my essential question is going to be, how can I describe the change in momentum when objects collide. Is that hard to read? Maybe it's hard to read. That says collide. How can I describe the change in momentum when objects collide? Write that down as your central question. Okay, so there's, like I said, there's going to be three subtopics here. Um, and they're going to be split into three different videos. So video number one is about something called change in momentum. All right, so let's, whoop, let's zoom in. And so this is going to be about change in momentum. So that's my first sort of heading here. Um, and so here's what we want to see with change in momentum is, uh, and let's go ahead and write it. So uh, Okay, so uh, whenever there is a collision, uh, each object, and sorry, that looks object. Is that just bad? Gosh, dang, guys. Each object has a change in velocity and and therefore a change. in momentum. All right, so let's look at what that says. So it says, whenever there is a collision, each object has a change in velocity and therefore a change in momentum. So what does that mean? That just means that whenever things run into each other, they're gonna change speed, okay? If, <clears throat> if I run into uh, Mr. Gall in the hallway, we're gonna change speeds. Um, and so anytime something changes speed, it also changes momentum. That's all we're saying, okay, is that a collision causes a change in momentum. But we want to be able to say how much the momentum changes. So we're going to calculate the change in momentum. Um, and so here we're going to use an equation uh, to, to write that down. And so I'm going to sort of write the equation out in a longer form first, and then we'll break it down into our notation. So here's what we want to say is if I want to calculate change, in momentum, okay, change in momentum, it's going to be equal to the momentum after the collision minus the momentum before the collision. So that kind of makes sense. If we want to know how something changes, 
Look at what it was at the end. Look at what it was at the beginning. Find out the difference between the two. We've been doing that for a long time. We've been doing that with delta T. We've been doing that with delta X, delta Y, all kinds of deltas. We've been doing it. So this is no longer delta T or delta X. Now this is delta P. So let's change this change in momentum. Let's change that to delta P. Remember that P is momentum. And I'm going to have this written on the board. So delta P is going to be equal to momentum after collision. So let's call this P after minus momentum before collision. So we'll call that P before. And that's as simple as it is right there, guys. That is one of our new equations. So to find the change in momentum, I want to use P after minus P before. And we can think about yesterday in our lab, we did that a lot. So if the momentum at the end was 1 and it started off as 0, well, then the change in momentum was 1. It, got, it gained 1. Uh, sometimes it might have started off big and then gone down and then we would lose momentum and then we'd have a negative number. But we're going to do a lot of work with this, but that's the general equation right there. All right, so that's the end of this video. Uh, take a little breather, move on to the second video.